everyone. I'm Melissa, this is Michael, and today we are going to talk to you about Springfield, Virginia. Ready? Yes. All ready. right. So Springfield comprises actually like three different parts. So you've got West Springfield, which is west of 95. You And then it's also south of the Beltway, but it's sort of, and it kind of meanders up a little bit. The north end extends north of Braddock Road and the south end just, just goes sort of past um, Fairfax County Parkway. And then Springfield proper, I guess, to distinguish from not West Springfield, it straddles 95 sort of both inside and outside the Beltway. And then there's also North Springfield, which is a little piece that fits right in there in between the two. There is no East or South Springfield. No, I mean, there is an eastern side of Springfield, but it's not East Springfield. Right. We don't call it that. And the whole time, like, researching for this, I was thinking, Springfield, Springfield, it's a hell of a town. <laughs> School yards up and the shopping malls down. <laughs> All right, the closest metro stop here is the Franconia Springfield Metro. All right, we're going to do a quick bit on history. So, the lands of Springfield as we know them now, were once plantations and then later Civil War battlegrounds. In the 1850s, a railroad was constructed to connect this area with Manassas, and then it went on to Gordonsville. So this sort of encouraged, as it does where everywhere, growth along the line. So little towns started to spring up all throughout Fairfax County. Uh, during the Great Depression, FDR created the Civilian Corps of Engineers, which created a lot of parks in the area as well. And we're going to talk about that actually in a different video about Springfield because there's a lot here we have to cover. So now what's going on in Springfield more recently? Well, you want to yes. tell them about that? Yeah, so um, I actually grew up right next to Springfield in Alexandria. And in the 80s and 90s, Springfield was one of the premier areas in Northern Virginia. Um, Springfield Mall was the place to be. It had some of the best shops and uh, it was just a place that we loved to hang out. And so um, it just was an epicenter of shopping and activity. And then over time it waned as the interest in malls waned. And so, uh, but there's been a huge revitalization of Springfield Town Center, which has been amazing. Um, it's now a destination for, you know, your Sunday brunching with friends and also, uh, you know, a night at Dave and Buster's, going to see a movie like, which I would love to go see soon, is Cocaine Bear. And yeah, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's about a 500 pound bear that finds a, a giant bag of kilos of cocaine and consumes them and then the rampage that he goes on. <laughs> it's amazing. Is it a cartoon? No, not at all. No, oh my God. It was produced by Elizabeth Banks. I'm very excited about it. So, uh, you know, and also a destination for awesome retail therapy. Springfield. Yes. Cocaine bear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Springfield is divided because of so many highways, but that division over time, especially in the 90s and the early 2000s um, and now, has really created such a unique charm to each individual neighborhood. And so, uh, you know, when you walk around, you can see it. And the one thing I love about Springfield is that it's so lush and it's just as lush as Falls Church, but it's so much less expensive totally. um, from a real estate perspective. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I absolutely love that. Um, and also the neighborhoods are really just wonderful to walk through. They have so much mid-century charm. Uh, you know, uh, this area was one of the uh, first bedroom community areas for DC. And so, you know, it's just some place that I've always loved and I really love seeing it invigorated again. And honestly, it's so competitive there still and it's a really strong area. People love it. So it's been really nice to see kind of you know what it was and then it took you know a turn for a little while which is a little depressing but uh now it's really you know just kind of back on track and i love going there i frequent it all the time that's great yeah all right well we talked a little bit about houses and stuff so let's talk about real estate and what goes on there so there are single family detached homes like in a total wide variety of price points so you're going to find ranch and rambler homes that are in the 500 thousands but once you cross the 600,000 mark, I would say that's probably like the sweet spot, right? Like that's really where you can get a really nice house. Uh, so you get a lot more options between 600 and 800,000 is where the bulk of the homes really are priced in Springfield. Then there's a few homes in the 900s and over a million because there's always going to be those outliers in the neighborhood. So if that's your thing, but you want to live in Springfield, then you know, you can, you can find that. Uh, so there are two types of townhomes in Springfield. There's first 
a condo townhome. Um, and that's lower in price than it carries a condo fee. And so these live like townhomes. So yeah. you don't, from the outside looking in, you don't think like I'm living in a condo, right? Yeah. Um, but it's a different style of ownership, right? So I don't, you want to talk about like the condo association and how that, yeah, how that kind of works. A lot of it is the yard maintenance that really, and then the exterior maintenance, even though it does live like a townhome, um, you know, there is a lot more. Um, and we'll actually talk about a, one of my favorite communities, uh, Charlestown HOA off of Rolling Road and Forrester Boulevard. Uh, it has the most beautiful brick townhomes with brick walls that surround the brick, uh, the neighbor, uh, the, excuse me, the backyard. Um, they are, uh, they're really large townhomes. Uh, a few of them actually have uh, curved staircases on the interior. They really are a beautiful throwback. Are they? They're fee simple, though, right? Are they fee simple? Or? They are fee simple, but, okay. they, but the one interesting thing about these is that even though they are fee simple, uh, they actually are. A lot of their components are treated like what would traditionally be a condominium because they want the oversight of it. Yeah. So okay. you actually like the exterior yeah. in regards to the roof, um, and then the yard mains. A lot of that stuff is actually covered by the HOA. Oh, it's interesting. And the the fee is actually higher. The fees are around. Uh, the last time I checked, like in the low fours. Yeah, um, they're not. Yeah, month. yeah, yeah. And so um, it's really fascinating to see. It was a very interesting kind of unique neighborhood, uh, and it's really beautiful. I actually sold one recently. All right, it's 2018 uh, for my about one of my best friends. Uh, her parents actually were the original owners. We actually had the original site map from when they bought it directly from oh, that's the cool. builder. Yeah, it was so cool, and I helped her sell it. And so it was this huge, beautiful throwback, uh, you know, and being able to meet all the neighbors. So there's actually quite a few neighbors that were actually original owners they were still well. there oh yeah yeah so that's you know that's a really unique townhome community um you know and then you have different you know the townhomes really do range in age um there are some newer townhomes 90s early 2000s there are some you know that were more recently built right around 2010 to 2015 those are more infrequently found um but there are is that wide range of style and condition and so you really have you know kind of your pick of the litter yeah yeah and so they do like they've got everything from like a true condo style and you can get those in like the 300 thousands and it's yeah. a townhouse it looks like a townhouse you just don't own the land underneath you yeah uh but you know and if the roof needs to be fixed that's typically a condo thing yeah. but then you've got fee simple which means you do own the land underneath you you are responsible for that maintenance unless you're in a planned community like what michael was just talking about with charlestown hoa uh so it's there's it runs the gamut and that's why the price points are sort of like they are all over the place because it's you're getting different things so it's hard to compare apples to apples but that's why you know you would contact us and we can kind of guide you through all right this community is going to have this here's what you're going to be responsible for so and then there's traditional condos in springfield too yeah. they actually range from the 200,000s to the 400,000 mark most of them are garden style and they consist of like two to four floors the whole building not yeah. the actual individual condo the condo's flat you're just on one level uh and then there aren't a ton of like newer developments in Springfield so the condos are really they're in more established communities um you Super know lush. yeah like they're great you know the, the landscaping's great they've you got access to either street parking or parking on site. And a lot of them also have access to a lot of the community pools, um, which we'll talk about in the other video, which is really amazing. Yeah, yeah. So we have to do sort of two different videos. We're going to do more Springfield lifestyle. But this one, we just wanted to give you an idea of sort of like the location, the history of how it came to be and kind of what's going on there now and the real estate. So check out the other Springfield video that we have, which is going to be more Springfield lifestyle. And our contact info is coming next. Take you, wanna hear 